Hey, hey, Jake J here, and I'm not very good at reading analog clocks. Just never been very good at it. Today I want to talk about level design. I'm going to throw some critiques of the workshop mode in Fallout 4 in there, because why not? Fallout 4 is the workshop settlement, I don't really know what it's called, workshop mode, settlement mode, whatever it is. This mode where you're building stuff is something that intrigues me a lot. It's actually pretty cool, but it's also really clunky. A lot of people have said that uh, workshop mode feels tacked on, and originally I didn't actually agree with that, but yeah, I'm, I'm coming around to that way of thinking. Uh, the menu in particular, uh, I mean, look at this thing. It's I don't know if you've ever used the search function in Hulu, but it kind of reminds me of that, you know, like scrolling back and forth to find your letter. It's just yeah, gross. It's gross. I, it, <laughs> uh, in case you hadn't noticed, I am using mods here. A number of them, if you have any interest in knowing what those mods are, uh, feel free to let me know and I can leave a list of them. So let's talk about level design because that's what I said I was going to talk about. Uh, specifically, I want to talk about macro versus micro. So this is actually a technique, a theory. Theory is probably a better way to say it, that you can use in really any sort of design. Uh, so what you can see here is I'm sort of laying out the structure. You know, I haven't even thought about at this point what the interior is going to look like. I have an idea of what the space is going to be used for, I'm just making a building that has an interesting shape. Something that I think is aesthetically pleasing. Uh, but you can make, I mean, if you have a better idea of what you're actually doing, uh, what your actual end goal is going to be than I do in this situation, uh, you can be a lot more mindful of, you know, what the what the silhouette, silhouette should be. And that's something that actually I don't really think about very much, and I really should, is silhouette. You know, you make a, a building and it should have a certain look to it because otherwise it just kind of blends into the rest of the horizon as you're looking for it. Of course, maybe that's your intention, but you know, know that going into it. I'm starting out and I'm thinking about what the shape of the building is gonna be. And I'm also thinking about how the building would sit on the ground here. So you can see here that I'm sort of putting supports underneath this particular part of the um, of the building. These are obviously not at all supportive, but they kind of look it, right? Like putting this up here makes me think they're supporting them in some way, or maybe there's a support behind it. Maybe not. I don't know. I kind of think it does. This is me sort of tweaking a thing so that you can see it a little bit more. That's not really necessary. I just think it's interesting to do it that way, I guess. Yeah, so at this stage, you can really sort of get away with um, doing lots of stuff. God, I need to pick a, a name. Settlement mode. That's what it's called. I just decided. I don't care what you think it was. Todd Howard. Whoever made this game. Here's me wandering around with a fence post. That's fun. Ugh. <laughs> At this point, I'm thinking way too early about what the details are going to be. I should be, again, I should be focusing on the general shape of the building, the structure. And there's a grad storm coming in, so we're going to bed. It's very important that I use my bed in the bathroom. Yeah, that looks like a shed. Honestly, I don't really know why I put it on stilts all the way around. I probably could have sunk it in a little bit more in the in the back part there so that it looks more like um, like I built it and then realized like I started building it and then realized that uh, there was a hill there I didn't do that though here's the thing about workshop settlement mode that kind of bugs me um, they kind of try to strike this balance between realistic and absurd gamey maybe so like right here I just picked up this generator like nothing like there's no narrative that makes me think that I could do that just with my brain or whatever with 
you know, using the Jedi Force or, or the Jedi Force. I sound like an old, old person. On the flip side, um, in vanilla Fallout, mind you, um, again, I have this modded, so it doesn't apply to me. In vanilla Fallout, you can only place stuff like this on the ground. Like, you can't place it floating in the air. So this is just me fiddling around with this windmill. Like, I feel like they should have just gone one way or the other. If you're going to make an absurd game, and it's absurd mechanic like this, where you can just pick up windmills and stuff, you know, lean into it. Do it, the, do it all the way. You know, I should be able to place things floating in the sky. Just let me do what I want. Or restrict it enough so that it's quote-unquote realistic. You know, go one way or the other, man. That's all I'm saying. If I'm making a settlement like this... I prefer not to have to worry about physics, but go one way or the other is my point. One thing I wanted to talk about is uh, grounding. It's this concept that in 3D spaces, when you're building them, a common mistake is to make your objects look too floaty. The idea is that you can fix this by sort of sinking things into the ground a little bit. Actually, this is a good example right here, so you can see that that in some cases, those feet would be floating just a tiny, tiny bit, and I maybe should have sunk them in a little bit more, but if they're just sort of resting on top of the, on top of the ceiling, chances are good that they'll look like they're floating, just because of the way that it, that a game engine works, you know, uh, bounding boxes and, and, uh, I can't think of the word right now. What is the word? Well, bounding boxes is sufficient. So the bounding box m might not sit perfectly on the bottom of the of the object. So it might sort of float up, and that's that's immersion breaking. That those are the kind of things um, that will make a player think that something is wrong, but they won't know exactly what. So like that wire there, it's going through the wall and then I'm looking for a power conduit and I forgot the power conduits suck in this game but if you have a wire going through a wall like that uh, yeah that's gonna be distracting even if you don't notice it right away your brain is thinking something is off about this space this is something you have to think about when you're when you're designing a level actually this is a great time to bring up um, believability right so what I'm trying to do here is string some wires together um, and I'm trying to get them through a hole in the wall here. That doesn't really work. If you were in real life making a structure like this, you would probably not think, hey, let's put a doorway here and then we'll just string it through the doorway. You know, in real life, you would just, you would build the wall and then you would, you would cut a hole in. Of course, this isn't real life and I can't, do that, you know, the game doesn't let me do that, so I have to think outside the box. This is sort of a facile example, but you might say, that's not realistic. No one would build a doorway there and then put a fence there. But A, I'm working with the elements that the game is giving me, but also, you know, it's that element of believability versus realism. I think, honestly, I think video games work way better when they're developed in the mindset of being believable as opposed to realistic. You know, like you think of Call of Duty or um, any first, any modern first person shooter, they focus on realism quite often. And in my opinion, the time and effort putting into making something look realistic, is just not worth it. Because your, your audience will be, will, will buy into your world. And if little inconsistencies like that show up, they're not going to notice them. It's a fine line. You know, like I, ju I just pointed out that an inconsistency like a wire going through a wall might bug somebody. But, um, you know, in, in some universes that wouldn't bug anybody. Because maybe you focus on nothing being realistic at all. In which case, you wouldn't notice a wire going through a wall. You know, a lot of um, probably PS1 or PS2 era games, 
probably did stuff like that where polygons were clipping through other polygons, walls were, you know, sticking through or whatever, and um, yeah, nobody said anything because you were you were in the game. It, it's just you put in all that time and effort, and the benefit that the player is going to get from that is just minimal. It just is. Um, but okay, time to go to bed. Go into bed. I'm sleepy. Gotta pick up that globe first, though. That's pretty important. And then sleep for 12 hours. <laughs> I just punched my microphone. It's cool. Oh, my pit boy has a light. It's a flashlight. Ah, oh, there it is. So what was I saying? <laughs> Before I rudely interrupted myself. Here's a moment when I'm trying to think if this is actually worth, you know, covering up. And I think at some point I just say, fuck it. <laughs> I don't care. See? Right there. Those were floating. Looks stupid. That's also sort of the, the pitfall that you run into making a world like Fallout 4. Realistic, quote-unquote. Is that when, when something like that happens, it's noticeable. It's very noticeable. All right, so we, we started this episode talking about micro versus macro. So let's get back to micro. We have this silhouette that we're happy with. I don't know if that's actually true. But um, let's say that I'm happy with the silhouette of this building. It's at this point, the way that I design interiors anyway, is that I like to put as much stuff in so that I level up a lot. Uh, but generally what I do is I just think about what the space is going to be used for and then what is the stuff that's going to be most useful for a space like that. So like, if you're a scavenger, you're going to need a lot of space to sort of break stuff apart. You're going to need um, shelves to put that stuff onto. And by the way, what I'm doing here is um, I'm providing some space for the farm equipment. And it's at this moment that I decide that the upper floor is going to be a hangout area. So this is obvious, you know, the upper floor there is obviously where you would work on the windmill. But, you know, people might want to hang up, hang out up there too. Sometimes people hang out on roofs. Roof, roofs. Good at English. Very, very good at English. So anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm putting... Uh, some patio furniture up here, because why not? Why wouldn't you come hang out up here? It's kind of cool. It's, you know, it's nice. And so those are the things... Honestly, those are the things that you have to think of. Like, why, when you're making a space, you have to think about, all right, what kind of stuff would you put up with... I've said this a hundred times, so I'm not going to say it again. You just have to think like a person, and probably you're a person... If you're a dog or a cat watching this video, you know, first of all, it's amazing that you can work a keyboard and mouse. Second of all, are you, are you really spending your time making Fallout 4 stuff? Because if you are, carry on, but, you know, know that you have a handicap in that you don't think like a person necessarily. Maybe you do. I don't know. So here's me just sort of trying to figure out what I'm going to steal from this house and bring into my my uh, space and the answer is this bookcase I bring other stuff too when I'm designing a space when I'm creating a space like this sometimes I just make choices that maybe don't make any like why would I put boxes up there I think they, I think it works I just don't know why it works sort of nonsensical sort of like having your stuff floating in the air like that keep in mind by the way when you're designing interior spaces and you're doing this sort of detail work the minutia can really really bog you down you have to sort of not worry about that I can I can spend more time than I care to remember just deciding oh should it go here should it go there Oh, should it go 15 pixels to the left? I don't know. 
Like this. Why? There was no reason for me to move that. Why did I move that? And I think maybe in just in general designing anything, you can get caught up in the in the in the minutia like that. And then I realize I don't have any steel, so I can't make anything. So I'm just like, fuck it. Let's go find some stuff. <laughs> you know, maybe that's uh maybe that's a good bit of advice right there. Know when to say fuck it. Not even I'm done. You know, at some point, it's done enough. And you just need to say, fuck it, I'm done. It's finished enough for me. Like, what am I doing with a broken toilet? What am I going to do with that? Like, why would anybody put a broken toilet up, up here? Are you going to use it? Are you going to pee in there? Because nobody's cleaning that out. I think I think the, the main point that you should take away from this video is that I have opinions about level design and often I don't follow them. Level design is something that I'm s still actively learning about. I need a shelf so it's not sticking in the wall like a friggin' idiot. And now I'm gonna throw a Molotov cocktail. All right, that was it. Uh, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. That'd be great. If you wanna see more YouTube, Jake, there's a bunch of links over here, subscription, and the other thing, playlist or whatever. And then down there, you know, you can you can check out Reddit Jake or Twitter Jake or Tumblr Jake if you're at all interested. If you're not, that's cool too. You know, do what you gotta do. That's what's important. You gotta do you. Alright? Alright. So talk to you soon.